So again, a variety of stops where the president will be actively campaigning in support of Democratic candidates. You're not going to stand there and tell me the president's been actively campaigning in these midterm elections, are you? Uh, I think uh, any examination of the president's schedule over the course of the next eight days in advance of the midterm election would indicate a serious commitment by this president to supporting Democratic candidates on the ballot. All right, there you go. Yeah, the president has been very, very, very busy, as you uh, might know by now. Joining us right now is the president of Endeavor Strategic Communications and former senior advisor to Congressman Daryl Issa, Kurt Bardella. Hello, Kurt. Hey, how's it going? I'm all right. Uh, the question is, how's it going? I mean, you could tell that Obama is ticked off, especially in a couple, of, a couple of past two weeks or so, when he has come out and said in interviews, oh, look, they, these people, you know, they, they're, they, they voted for all my policies. They may not want me near them or not, not have me with them, but they support everything I do. I mean, isn't that showing uh, how, he, how angry he is at the senators <laughs> who don't want him or the senatorial candidates who don't want him there? You know, it's such a fun role reversal. It reminds me very much about things for, for Republicans during the last uh, cycle of the President Bush administration. You couldn't see any Republican wanting a photo with George W. Bush. Now Democrats are in the same situation, and they're being asked at every debate, you know, do you support President Obama? Uh, would, would you do what you did again, knowing what you know now? You vote with Obama 97 percent of the time in Louisiana. Why, you know, why is that? You know, even though he's not on the ballot, he's definitely at the forefront of the conversation. And when even your closest allies are trying to run from you and trying to disparage your record, uh, you know, there's, there is nowhere President Obama can turn where he's getting any, any positive reinforcement at all. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty brutal for him out there. Uh, liberals have abandoned him. Uh, people who have voted with them for every policy from Obamacare to stimulus to, to some of these ridiculous boondoggles that we've seen, he just it doesn't want to be seen anywhere. He's persona non grata. Yeah, and when you get Jean Shaheen, and, uh, and uh, I think, I don't know if I remember it was her, it was certainly the, the uh, candidate in Kentucky, and then one other candidate, I don't remember, maybe it was Shaheen, who won't even say if they voted for Obama. <laughs> uh, that's pretty bad. But let's talk about New Hampshire, and let's talk about that, uh, that Senate race. And, uh, you know, it, it looks like Scott Brown has a very, very legitimate chance of uh, coming back to the U.S. Senate. Well, you know, it, it says a lot when uh, the, every poll you look at right now is within the margin of error. It's that close between Scott Brown and, and Senator Shaheen. There's no question that the narrative going into the final stretch here is very bad for and toxic for Democrats nationwide. And again, when the conversation that every Democrat is being asked about is a sitting unpopular president and his policies that they've all supported, that's not where you want to be in an election like this. And, and I'll tell you, if Scott Brown wins on Tuesday, it's going to be a huge night for Republicans nationwide. Yeah, absolutely. You also have a chance of uh, a Republican governor in Massachusetts, uh, which is in close proximity, of course, geographically speaking. But let's go out to Wisconsin uh, and, and let's look at what's going on in the gubernatorial race there. Scott Walker is, is neck and neck, nip and tuck, whatever you want to call it. And I'm sure those polls are, are pretty much within the margin of error, too. But um, talk about his chances. I mean, he won the recall election. Uh, but, you know, recently there's been some uh, some stories out there that Walker's not pleased with Chris Christie. Now, I had Scott Walker in this studio several months ago when he wrote his book, and this was the last NFL season, and they had been together at the Giants game and talking about how much they love each other and how much they have in common. Why, why would Christie not be 100 uh, percent behind Walker and Walker not be happy about Christie? Well, I think Walker uh, probably feels a little orphaned in some ways. In that he, it's not just that he doesn't. He's not grateful for the appearance and campaign stuff, but I think he would like a lot more support from the broader apparatus that, that Governor Christie is chairman of the Republican Governors Association. Uh, and, he, and he feels a little bit left behind when you look at the amount of resources that are being spent in places like Florida, uh, you know, in the Rick Scott Chris Christie race, uh, Kansas, you know, uh, Senator Br uh, Governor Brownback is in neck and neck race. He actually might lose that one. Uh, Walker feels kind of like the forgotten guy left to fend for himself. Now, uh, you know, just in the, in the last few minutes, a new poll was released out in, in, in Wisconsin by Marquette that shows Walker with a seven-point lead amongst likely voters. Uh, so, uh, like anything, these elections come down to the ground game, come down to getting your, right. your side out to vote. And Republicans have more of an incentive to vote in this election than they've had in a long time. Absolutely, and I think it would be real important if uh, I, I heard kind of a uh, kind of a, a whisper that, hey, put the Republicans in the Senate, give us control, more control of the House, and we will stop. 
the uh, impending uh, executive order from being implemented where Obama is expected to legalize uh, all these illegals. Um, I think if that was talked about a lot more, that would uh, that they can make that an issue before it happens. But I've only heard a whisper here and a whisper there. I think they should kind of uh, nationalize that in the last week. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of things have kind of taken a backseat with the specter of Ebola and the specter of the, the yep. terrorist threat posed by ISIS. They've really kind of changed the dynamic of the campaign. Because without question, the issue of the, the you know, blatant abuse of executive authority by the Obama administration, this president, a lawless president who likes to govern by fiat and not through, not through Congress, uh, uh, is a central absolutely. issue. We've seen what happens a to the absolutely president on Kurt I, uh, Kurt, I appreciate it. Great talking to you. We'll have you back real soon. Up next, two great American heroes. Watch. Just located. Original U.S. government.